Today my guest is Richard Campbell. Richard, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for having me up. Oh, thanks for coming. It's uh, thrilled to have you back. Mm -hmm. um, this is a tough one. Okay. What do you do for a living? I've learned to harness my ADD for the forces of good. <laughs> I like working on lots of different things, yeah. and so I've really constructed a, a career for myself where I work on different projects all the time. I mean, obviously, .NET Rocks, a lot of people know about that, and Run As Radio, the podcasts are one thing. And my role in the shows, besides being one of the hosts, is a lot of the content planning. So I deal with finding guests, working on topics, sort of thinking in the story arc okay. of you know coming into something like Build. I wanted to have a bunch of shows that sort of got people ready. We talked about UX, we talked about C++, you know, really got a sense of what was coming up on that. And that's generally the way, what I think about a lot of the time. Sure. So the, the, because, probably because there's a lot going on at Build, a lot of big announcements there. Mm -hmm. Potent, at least Although they were secret. But yeah, you, you don't know that going in, but you figured there would be. Yeah, there's a few, and you knew there was, obviously we're going to talk about Windows 8, yeah. you know, there was a bunch of things we knew were coming and, and certain pieces were obvious, like I think, uh, it's clear, it was, it was apparent before, and it's clear now that XAML's playing a huge role in, in inside of Windows 8. Oh. And so I really wanted to get some messaging around that coming in on the shows. And then beyond the shows, you know, once you're good at content planning, you end up working on magazines, you end up working on conferences and so forth. So I spent a chunk of my time just thinking about what kind of information developers are going to care about next, three months from now, six months from now. You know, I, I feel like I, I do that more than just about anybody else I know. Sure, so the Build Conference is a great time for that because that's when a lot of announcements come out. We just found out our marching v orders for a year. Yeah, the V-next of uh, Windows and some hints about uh, Visual Studio 2010. Mm -hmm. and some, uh, 2012. 2012, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of other... Uh, Expression you know, Blend things, had a uh, version 5 out. Uh, I had the new IE 10 preview. But, I mean, obviously, the big thing was Windows 8 and the announcements around WinRT or the Windows Runtime. Okay, so you, this is um, today's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You got back from Build on what, Sunday? Friday. On yeah. Friday. So you, this it's all still fresh in your mind. Yeah. What's, uh, what's your impression on it? We're still sorting things out, too. Yeah. You know, I, um, I think uh, Microsoft's pulled off a big one. Like, this is a remarkable chunk of technology they've already built in the pre-release with pre-release hardware. We've got that little cool... What they call it the Samsung Fondle slab. Oh yeah, you didn't bring it. I didn't bring it with okay, me, sorry, but, it's, but it's, uh, it's about this, maybe a little smaller than this. Yeah, smaller like two than thirds that. the size of that, and it looks sort of like my iPad. Yeah, a little larger. Yeah, but it's narrower. It's wider. It's more of a right. widescreen sort of format. Yeah. But uh, what was interesting about it was just seeing how uh, well it ran, how the, the how solid the hardware actually was for what was pre-release gear. You know, sure. it's not the final product. It's not the hardware, final software. Pre-release software. Yeah, and yet it's pretty usable. And the software is Windows 8. Yes. What do you think about Windows 8 so far? Well, I think uh, Microsoft's made an interesting move with the runtime that they've they've shifted away from. Uh, they really pulled Windows tighter into the development cycle. So, what they, there was a great architecture diagram. Architecture. Was a great yes. term. Lots, isn't of, it? lots of blocks with products and uh, layers. Well, and it's, they were shown in the keynote at Build. And right. it's, it's, I think it's the most widely distributed piece of Build so far, is this diagram. And there's sort of a, a big green chunk, which is really the new stuff in Windows 8, and then there's a blue chunk off the side. And the big thing that the blue chunk on the side said is, your existing .NET apps, your existing Silverlight apps, your existing C++ apps, your existing web apps, all run on Windows 8. It all works. Nothing stops working. That's very comforting to me. It's and a, to end of my customers. And you know, that's been Microsoft's practice all along. It is yeah. incredibly rare, and really the only time you can point to is when .NET came along, that we had real breaking changes. It's very, very rare that Microsoft creates breaking changes. They're pretty careful about that. So this is not a breaking change. You okay. can take your existing apps, you can run it on the existing uh, on this hardware, and it works just fine. You now, could argue that Vista had some breaking changes with some of the drivers. Yeah, those are different kinds of breaking. That's not. Yeah, it's something wouldn't run, wouldn't run your app, wouldn't run anybody's app. That's you know, and there was really video driver problems. Then you could look, you actually point back at XPSP2 okay. service pack two because of the new security requirements broke some software. Okay. And Microsoft was pretty upfront about that. You know, we knew that going in. There were there was solutions to it. Okay. So now when you look at the WinRT side of things, they've done something very interesting. They've sort of split the world into three equal pieces that all have sort of an equal role to play inside of. Uh, the Windows RT space. So you've got the .NET stack is there. Right, so C Sharp VB against .NET CLR 4.5 with a few changes. There's a little asterisk on that. So you're still going through the CLR 4.5, but there's a couple of things that are different, and it goes through WinRT. 
So you can take your existing .NET applications and you can recompile them into this metro mode. Okay. And you'll find there's a couple of changes. Stuff like file access and network access, a few things have changed there. So there might need to be revisions to your apps to make it work. The API has changed. So there's changes, changes the in the APIs. It's still CLR, the bulk of your code's going to move straight across, but you're going to find points where you're going to need to make changes because you're now calling through the WinRT. Okay, you said that about three times, WinRT. Yeah, Win on, Windows Runtime. What, now what is that? So this is a layer that owns a lot of the network stack. It's the connection to the kernel. Right? Okay. And the big thing is that the video graphics have moved into that space. So they've moved XAML down closer to the kernel, okay. right? really in the guise of DirectX. So the, you know, we're really getting to the point that was promised to us all the way back in Vista, okay. which was that Windows graphical rendering would be super fast. It would be the same as gaming, right? DirectX everywhere. Mm, okay. And there's been various bumps along the way. And one of the things that happened was you know, WPF living in .NET means it has to go through a lot to get to the to the video card. And by shifting that downward, really putting the video controls into the Windows runtime, we're getting better performance, but it changes the way some of our code works. Now I said there was three different ways. So okay, so I want to start with .NET, .NET because right. .NET still got a big role to play, an equal role to play in this. The two other stacks are the C++ stack, C okay. and C++, still working directly against the Win WinRT and building apps on Windows. That's their full so that fledged partner. Much. Not much. The one thing you remember is that C is still evolving. They just shipped a new specification, right? C eleven is a remarkable language. We've had we did a show on Donet Rocks on it not too long ago with Kate Gregory. Yeah. And the big thing that Kate sort of surfaced from is the idea that C has been influenced by C sharp. That you're seeing lambdas, you're seeing auto memory expiration, like a lot of stuff that we take for granted in other languages now are starting to appear in C. So I don't want to discount the significance of C. That C, you remember, unmanaged C hasn't been able to use WPF because they can't get to the .NET stack. They had to go through managed C. And it was a different way to code. So it's a big deal now that C will get to talk to XAML down in WinRT. Okay, so, so the, the existing C is the probably stay the same. Yes. Now there's more capabilities. So exactly. The C programmers get to be full fledged Windows developers right. in that sense. Yeah. They get to use all the same stuff that the .NET folks got to use. Not the runtime, you know, not the framework, but the certainly the video side. All twelve of them will be thrilled about that. <laughs> it's more than you think. There's a lot of guys out there. Stack number three, and again, equal role, and this is really what this diagram showed, is the HTML JavaScript stack. So okay. they've got a special JavaScript engine called the Chopra engine. Chopra. That, the Chopra engine that is JavaScript and it connects directly to Windows RT. Mm -hmm. So we have speaking. the ability to use these things called contracts mm -hmm. in JavaScript to speak to Windows RT. That's mm -hmm. pretty compelling. Right? Yeah. That means A, stinky fast. Right? Compared to a typical web page, this is something that's going to perform extremely well. And direct access to Metro. Okay. So all three of those stacks have the same ability to build Metro apps. Whatever skill you've got, you can build Metro apps then. So, so I, you say HTML and JavaScript, and I immediately think web apps. Right. But you're telling me, no, HTML and JavaScript is just, it, it, you can use that to build any uh, Windows apps. Any Metro. Windows applications. And then, now there's Metro a few things that have happened, right? And that's why Silverlight is dead, right? Right. Silverlight's not that dead. Silverlight's not dead. Okay. For a couple of reasons. I mean, first off, if you've got an existing Silverlight app, it obviously runs in the stack. It runs in the desktop mode, it doesn't run in the metro mode. Okay. But because XAML focused so centrally in Windows RT, right, in Windows 8, it's just not a big deal to take a Silverlight app and run it in this new mode. I mean, that's one of the demos they did. We said, here's an existing Windows app, uh, existing Silverlight app built by Scott Guthrie. Mm -hmm. da, 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 that works great. We pull it over here. We flip into this onto this other framework, make a couple of changes here and here. Now it's running in Metro. Oh, okay. All right. So it can be done. I guarantee you, your mileage is going to vary from that. I'm sure. sure that was a very polished demo that lasts all of two minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, our apps won't be quite that graceful, but there's clearly a path. If a Silverlight app wants to be a Metro app, it can be. Silverlight's not going to stop working. It runs great on Windows 8. I'm running it. It's apparent that in the next few months, we're probably going to see Silverlight 5. The beta's been wandering around for a while. So there's another version of Silverlight coming. It, it, obviously, Windows 8's going to support it. So it isn't dead. Yeah, so the, I think what I'm hearing is that uh, things like Silverlight, they're still around. You can still build applications on them, which mm -hmm. is comforting to the, the people that have invested in that skill set. Yeah. But now there's another option. HTML and CSS gives us another option. I'm sorry, HTML and JavaScript. 
there's other option to build rich applications. Well, this is about building. So I got three different ways to build Metro apps, right? I've got my .NET stack for building Metro apps. I got C++ for building Metro apps. I got okay. HTML, JavaScript for building Metro apps. Okay. So the next question you got to ask is, what should be a Metro app? Because not everything should be a Metro app. Real quickly, define Metro. So Metro is that Windows Phone 7 look, the, the animated tiles. Like they've now sort of combined the widget and the icon into one thing. Okay. And it, they're, it's quite beautiful, right? It's a touch-centric UI. There's no windows in those windows anymore. So when you click on something, it takes the whole screen. Right. Right? You can then bring something else in, and it'll par partition the screen for you. But there's no, none of that. You know what's gone? You don't stack stuff anymore. Hmm. You, I mean, how many times have you had your window filled with windows? Right? Your screen is just loaded full of windows. You're trying to find the one you're looking right. for, right? You need a taskbar, you need all that Chrome to navigate those stacks of windows. And Windows 8 in the Metro mode has eliminated that. Desktop mode is still just the windows you've always known. But Metro mode just doesn't do that anymore. So for the average mortal, you know, not you and me, who, who are pretty comfortable with navigating all of that stuff, the average person, this is way simpler. Sure. That you uh, just have these the windows don't stack up the one behind the other. Walk over their desktop and they've got the same application launched thirty five times. Well, like, even my they, wife they can't find they just launch it again. Even my wife who just maximizes every window. Right. Doesn't matter that I give her a thirty inch screen. There's <laughs> one huge right. browser window. It's just the way she thinks, right? And so what Microsoft's done there is just said that's the default. That's how it works, right? right. We're going to control your sizing for you now. We're going to show you different sizing options. I can put two apps up side by side, but it's going to decide the versioning for it. The upside of that from a developer's point of view is it's pretty easy for you to know the rules on how to make your app look depending on what portion of the screen it's got. Mm -hmm. And that proportion changes depending on the resolution of the screen. So bigger screens with higher resolution have more options for how to stack things together. I see. Okay. But no more stacking, right? That whole thing goes away. Mm -hmm. But we get back to the original question, which is what makes sense in the Metro app? I mean, Metro is pretty nice for navigation, right? But it's a touch-centric navigation. It's, it's not a lot of fun. If you install the, the preview, and anybody can install the preview, it's freely downloadable yeah, from I can install this laptop. You put it on anything you want. The touch, uh, machine. And it will work with a non-touch machine, but you're not going to like it near as much. Right. The, right? the mouse interface is not as pleasant as the touch interface. Mm -hmm. So you really want a touch machine. You know what runs the pre-release really well? The old PDC-09. Uh, tablet to give away. Uh, another, another tablet. Yeah, yeah, that was a convertible <laughs> tablet. Okay. You know, not a real horsepower machine. Okay. Hey, I really, I've got both of them. When you sit them side by side, you're like, wow, we've come a long way <laughs> in a couple of years in terms of hardware. The the that little Samsung tablet is much sexier than the than the Acer. I like the screen resolution on that. But what I was impressed with is, I'm pretty sure that pre-release version of Windows 8 runs better on the PDC 09 machine. Than the Win Seven stuff is. That's interesting. That's a that's the last. That's two. That would be two operating systems in a row. Yeah. That had reduced uh, hardware cards. Mm -hmm. They run faster on lighter. Uh, yeah, uh, probably on the, same the first two ever. It's an interesting direction we're going in. That they're really lightening things up, right, and, and creating that flexibility. So, back to the issue of our Metro apps. The, I mean, Visual Studio just shouldn't be a Metro app. It makes no sense. Right. You think about the way that it works. It doesn't make sense as a Metro app. It's a fine initial interface, but you tend to tend to go to the sort of sovereign app mode with the docking system right. and so you forth. You need a lot of stuff on the screen. Yeah, the it, but it's, that's not for regular people either, right. right? It's a development tool. Sure. So I think you're going to, you know, the real debate, and I do not know the answer to this, is where Office falls in on this. Right. Does Office make sense as a Metro app, or does it have, make sense to stay as a desktop app? And I think, you know, some folks are saying Windows 8 is two operating systems in one, that you've got the Metro side, you've got the desktop side, and the desktop's just a bridge. And I don't believe that. I think that part's never going to go away because mm -hmm. there's the types of work you do that n never make sense in the Metro form factor. You're always going to end up wanting a regular screen and the regular rules, and, and that's how it's going to work. I could be wrong. I mean, I've been wrong before. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> but it seems to me that that's what's going to end up happening. You know, we're already seeing that bifurcation in tablet behavior anyway, right? Does it? There's the sit-back behavior. I watch a video, I, leave, I sit back in my chair, okay. watch a video, surf some pages, read some documentation, read a book, that sort of input side. Sure. And then there's the sit up behavior. I write an email, I write a document, I'm editing, I need a keyboard. That's interesting. So right. I, I own an iPad, I don't mm -hmm. own any other type of PC. And um, I think of it as a data consumption device. Right. I almost never type on it. The only thing I type on is maybe 140 characters or less. Right. Or to type in a web page, look up something on IMDb, 
than I'm you know, sitting back and watching. Them. It's that sit it's back behavior. Right? It's it's not. Uh, I just don't use it for that. Right. And there's certain class of software that makes sense in sit back behavior. Yeah. You never sit back to use Studio. Right. Right. But I don't use my tablet to use Studio. Exactly. <laughs> so I think what we're seeing here is Microsoft creating a set of tools that allow us to deal with that bifurcation. Okay. Right. The two different roles can live side by side, and you can choose how to use it. And then that little fondle slab they gave us fondle snaps slab. into a base with a keyboard, so you can use it like a regular laptop if you want. Right? It's a Bluetooth keyboard, so it's very cute. Um, I don't know that we'll actually go that way. It's like I said, it's pre-release hardware, right. but it speaks to the idea of I carry it around and sit back and play with it. I snap it in a base. I sit up to use it. Yeah, I like the little footprint. It's just a small stand. That Tiny little put stand. Put it in as a couple of uh, uh, things to be plugged into, Ethernet, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, let's uh, back up just a little bit, just to build itself. Uh, so Microsoft, they got their message out, mm -hmm. and then they shut up. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Which I, I don't remember them ever doing before. Well, and also there lots of secrecy leading in. Yeah, that's it. So, so they, they were very, very So quiet. Apple's very good at that, right? They, they, they keep things secret until then they just announce them. And all the Although there's still a distinctive difference between what Microsoft did here and what Apple did here. When Apple makes an announcement, it's about a product that's about to ship the next month. Ah, okay. Right? And Microsoft has announced something that is many months away sure, still. Yeah. And they were pretty upfront about this. This is a pre-release. It's not even a beta. Right. There's going to be a beta. There's going to be a release candidate. And then we'll go to RTM. So there's many months to go. But, but they were very secret going up to it. Bleeding into this. And then the, now they're going dark again. Well, it, 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 that seems to be the case. So, you know, with Dr. Rocks, I approached Steven Sanofsky and said, you know, you've done this great announcement at Build. How about coming on the show and talking to us about it? He said, he didn't say no. <laughs> what he said is, you know, I think we're going to be quiet now and listen. And I've talked to other people inside of Corp and so forth, and that's sort of been the mantra. So we have now spoken our piece for the week. All the videos are out there for anybody can see. We can see everything we have. We've said what we need to say. Now we want to hear what you have to say about it. So what's your opinion on why they're doing that? I think there, you know, there's, there's a couple of ways of looking at it. One of these is you look at what happened around Longhorn, right, the precursor to Vista. Okay. And there, Microsoft was incredibly open. They were, one would almost argue, too open. Because what happens when you're incredibly open is that you're, you're really talking about your hopes and dreams for the product as much as what you're actually going to build. And as we know with Longhorn, they had to back off on what they ended up building. Vista ended up being a very different product than what Longhorn was originally promised to be. And there's many reasons why that is. But the other way, if you wanted to cut it down to a very short phrase, is you'd say they overpromised and they underdelivered. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not fair, but it's an easy way to coin it. And what I see. Windows try to do now is let's underpromise and overdeliver. If we keep our mouths shut, if we don't overpromise these things, and then we show what we've got, we can surprise people. We can overdeliver on it, okay. and I can appreciate. So that I can appreciate why they let it. I don't know that it's necessary, right? I don't know if the product is actually better than that, and I don't know that we'll ever know. Yeah. The second half, this now we're going to go quiet and listen. In some ways, I really appreciate that. That they're not keep on hammering the message. They're avoiding the echo chamber of keeping on saying their thing over and over again until we repeat it back to them. They're now, they've said their piece and they're willing to listen to how we're interpreting it. And then maybe, I don't know when they're going to start talking again, but right now they're listening. It's only been a week, not even. Right. So give them some time, we'll see what happens. I'm excited about it. It's, it's a different feel. It's not as easy, but you know, every change is a challenge. Okay. How many uh, shows did you record in the building? One. Only one? Only one. one. Uh, we did our 700 episode of Dr. Rocks there, and we actually recorded it at Tim Huckabee's outrageous party the night before Build started. And what we did was collect a series of short interviews of what people thought was going to happen at Build, knowing we were going to publish it after Build. <laughs> so uh, that show is probably live now, and okay. uh, you'll listen to the chaos. You know, we've got yeah, zero, zero shows. NetRocks.com. Yes, DonnerRocks.com. Fantastic Rocks. show. I recommend everybody go check that out. Thanks. And all the zero zero shows tend towards being a little silly. You know, we have a, a zero zero show every year now. We do 104 shows a year, so we try and have fun on the zero zero shows. Excellent, Richard. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. David. use technology. No, wait, that's wrong. Friends don't let friends use IE6. Don't do it. Just say no.